Throughout the Book of Mormon and early church history, righteous followers of Christ have had to flee into the wilderness to avoid persecution. Fleeing into the wilderness to escape the world is clearly a consistent theme in a number of Book of Mormon stories. These stories provide us with some valuable insights that can help us in our own personal journeys. In many ways, the wilderness is a fitting symbol of mortal life itself. It can be a place of testing and trial. Just as Nephi was tested in the wilderness with tasks and trials, so are we tested in this mortal life to see if we will follow the Lord. In a wilderness environment, we become vulnerable, cut off, dependent on divine sustenance, and capable of making real and meaningful sacrifices. Such an experience is prominent with Lehi and his family's travel through the Arabian wilderness. One noted scholar said, it was the wandering in the wilderness that could teach the people better than anything else what they needed most to learn. The feeling of absolute and complete dependence on God at all times for all they had and were. Ironically, the wilderness can also be a place of refuge. Another scholar noted, we need not reject cities and civilization to find God. Yet, how often do we physically or symbolically need to temporarily separate ourselves from cities, from civilization, for the simplicity of wilderness or mountaintops, such as temples, where the distractions of civilization do not impede our hope to have unfettered communication with the divine? In cases similar to Alma the Elder, the people fled into the wilderness to escape the world and to live the gospel in peace. From all these examples, we learn that the Book of Mormon repeatedly shows us how the wilderness of mortality offers necessary environments for growth and sanctification. And although it may be hard at first in our own personal wildernesses, the Lord's power can transform any wilderness, even the world itself, into a celestial abode of peace and happiness. And now you know why.